Praise the Lord today is asking one question. Why to work hard? Philippians 2, 12. Why to work hard? Yen karinda maka ureke vendu? Why to work hard? Work hard to show the result of uh, your salvation. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For the God is working in you, giving you the desires and the power to do what pleases you. So God is telling that work hard. Why? To show the result of your salvation. To, result, to show the result of the salvation, we have to work hard. How? Obey the God with the deep reverence and fear because God is working in us and giving us the desires and power to do what pleases God. So today we will see, let us see how to work hard. What is working hard? The working hard is nothing but to, which, which means to work to full, work to full completion, not incompletion, work to full completion, working out a problem in mathematics, such as working out a problem in mathematics. In Paul's state, it is used for working in minds, that is getting out of the mind all the valuable words possible. That is called working as a working out the problem in mathematics are working in minds are working in the field that is called a workout that what do you mean by workout the workout means like working out for solving the problem in the maths like working in the minds how to work in the mind getting out all paths about valuable ones from are possible from the mind and working in the field so as to get the greatest to harvest them that is what god is telling you today work hard work hard why how to work how how to work hard means like working um, solving a problem of max um, like um, working in the mind like working in the field you have to work hard why to show the result of your salvation how to work hard obeying god with the deep reverence and fear of the god that's what we have to do so even the people in the world also working hard so in, in the midst of the problem is telling us you have to work hard because you want to out the good purpose of God in our life. How to work hard in the midst of the problem. That's what we are going to see, see today. Because the world people are also working hard and the Christians are also working hard. What's the difference between the Christians who are working hard compared to the worldly people who are working hard? Because um, the wonderful thing about Christian is that um, knowledge that God has a plan for our life. Um, so the Christian knows that God has a knowledge um, they have the knowledge that God has a plan for their life because what plan they have is not going to fulfill because God has a plan for their life. That is the first knowledge the Christian have. And next one is that they are they know very well that God will help them to work out for their for his for his glory. So when you finish that work, you are not your name is not going to be glorified. God's name is going to be going to be glorified. So the Christians are very sure that God is going to help in that work. And third thing is that um, the, the Christians are, are working in the midst of the twisted and distorted society, but the Christians stand in the standard of the word of God. So even though we are uh, living in, in the midst of this uh, distorted and twisted society who want to work hard, but not not only to work hard to get the money, but to work hard in the way cheating the people, uh, getting the bribes and, and uh, putting down the people and um, taking the work of other people and becoming uh, uh, boss of the company. All these things are pe uh, worldly people are doing, but the Christians um, are not doing like that because they are keeping the, the God standard in their life. That's what the Bible is asking us to do, to, to work hard. You have to keep the God standard in, in, in front of you, not to uh, be like worldly people and try to deceive people and become um, and get the money that's what it is uh, telling uh, God uh, God told in Philippians chapter 2 verse 15 live clean innocent uh, li lives as, as um, children of God shining like bright lights in the world full of crooked and preserved people but so we have to measure our life by the word of God and which is a perfect standard and we should not compare with the other people who are doing all crooked things living in a crooked way and um, getting money so next one is that uh, so we should have that knowledge not only that we should not complain about argue about our situation if we start complaining argue about the situation the enemy start to come and attack from all the directions so we should be um, for, we should be very careful about it third next one is we have to hope Hold firm the word of life um, because Christ led a perfect life in an imperfect world. We are also called to live a perfect life in the imperfect world, to live a perfect life in the imperfect world and work hard and earn for the living by how, how to do that? By hold, holding the word of God firmly in our life um, and keeping the standard of the uh, word of God in our life and um, having the knowledge that God has a plan in our life um, and having the knowledge that when we fulfill that purpose, uh, God's name is going to 
be fulfilled and, and um, it's going to be glorified and we have to do all these things without complaining or arguing. Um, that's what uh, a, a set of people God used um, to bring out the uh, complete potential from the life. Um, if you do according to this word of God, like Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 to 16, God is able to bring out the complete potential from us um, and make us um, our life to be uh, um, to, to be uh, to be to be set, set, set standard for before other uh, people, other believers. Um, to do that, what we have to do is that uh, do everything without complaining or arguing, so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives at Christ of uh, children of Christ. Shine like bright lights in the world full of crooked and preserved people. Hold firm to the world, uh, world of life. Then, uh, you, you, the, the, by this way, you can um, show the, uh, the you can fulfill the. Uh, the uh, salvation in your life by obeying God with a deep reverence and the fear of the Lord. Um, so how to do it? Uh, there are a set of people that during the time of Nehemiah, they are also having so much of problem in their life. Um, the problem in their life is that um, uh, they already borrowed money uh, for, on, on their field uh, and the vineyard to pay the tax um, and they were under great famine and shortage of food. Uh, so they put the mortgages, their field and vineyards um, and they are also same family and, uh, and they are also uh, and the children are also sold as a slaves um, and they have nothing, they have sold everything, even the daughters, they are helpless in the situation. The main problem with that uh, condition is that um, the, the land, uh, Jerusalem was, uh, the wall around the Jerusalem was totally broken. When the people start to work in the field, the enemy come and attack them. When they harvest, the enemy come and take the grains. Um, when they sleep in the night, they come and take the uh, girl children, uh, girl, girl um, teen girls um, and rape them. And there, there is no peace in their family peace in their society. The, to come out of this problem, first thing they have to do is build the wall around the Jerusalem. That, that work only Nehemiah started to do. It is not easy. In, the, in spite of all this tough situation, they, Nehemiah called the people to build the, to build the wall around the uh, Jerusalem. And uh, God used only those people to bring out the entire potential for the people and fulfilled that project of completing the wall within 52 days. Um, how, how, how they fulfill that purpose is they, they pray to God and keep the God as a protection against day and night. Um, they, they, when they get tired, they start to complain. But um, Nehemiah was telling them, don't complain and go tired because you know, all the enemies are trying to come and attack us in all directions. So next thing is that what's the situation? Uh, what happened? They have to stop the work um, and they have to keep the uh, people uh, all around around the uh, wall where there is vulnerable with the uh, heavy, uh, heavy weapons um, so they can be protected. Um, when there is any enemies coming and attacking, attacking, they will make a great noise um, with the trumpet uh, and the people get, become urged um, and they become so vigilant um, and they start to um, fight their uh, uh, fight their battle in such a way they can remove, they can overcome their enemies and uh, build the wall. But like this, um, they started to build their uh, work, started to do their work in spite of all their mortgages, in spite of all their slavery, in spite of all their famines, in spite of all their uh, money problem, because uh, uh, the Nehemiah told in, in, in the Nehemiah chapter 4, uh, verse 14, Nehemiah quote, don't be afraid of enemy. Remember the Lord, which is who is great and glorious, and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. As, uh, as it is written in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14, they fought for their brother, for son, for daughter, and the wife, and their homes, um, and they finished the, uh, the project of completing, the, uh, the building the wall around uh, the Nehemiah, around the Jerusalem within 52 days. Um. So God, the same God, the God of Nehemiah is now telling to you also, work hard to show the result of your salvation, obeying God with a deep reverence and fear of and fear. For God is working in you, uh, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. I pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this revelation, my Jesus. Um, help us to work hard and fulfill the purpose of uh, God in our life. Um, in the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you.